go. Time to start the pad for the shop. Summer solstice is here in Alaska and that's good news for Eric and I because we have been steadily working away this spring and we could definitely utilize the warmth and the daylight hours now. We moved up to this property about two months ago. It's 40 acres and we have just been concentrating all of our efforts on starting developing it. We just made it out to the cabin and we are moving today. We have both trucks. We have two trailers. This one is currently stuck in the driveway. There's actually an indoor bathroom at this cabin. The first thing that we did was turn an existing shed into the chicken coop and we've already started on our solar system. We have the solar panels up, they're not connected, but that's going to be our future solar system to power our needs here at this property. And we have been making great use of the tractor that we picked up earlier this year down in the lower states. That thing is awesome. It is just taking care of all the things we needed to here. This tractor is a beast. It is like almost unstoppable. Oh yeah, you're good now. It's not going anywhere. It has been a tremendous tool for us and I know that the hours are going to rack up on this next big project that we're working on, which is our Quonset hut shop. So that's the one we've been kind of leading to. Now that summer's here, we're ready to rock on it. Last fall, we brought up the Quonset hut shop and we hope to have it completed or near complete this fall. It is a noble goal. It is a massive undertaking. So we know that going into it and we're ready for the challenge. About a week ago, Eric started cutting in our driveway to the shop. It's gonna kind of meander along the forest and the shop itself will sit wide out in the open. Eric's already been making really good progress on the driveway. He's just flying through the work. So we're gonna go check on him and see how he's doing. all that work in like less than a half hour. Yeah, that was crazy. Well, what an awesome morning we're having out here so far. The Branson tractor, it just continues to impress us. And today we're putting in a driveway. We are going to be building a massive shop out here, kind of like a big garage for us. It's gonna be 40 feet by 60 feet and it's a Quonset hut. So we're really looking forward to it and we're pretty much starting on it today. So this is gonna be the driveway that's going into it. We picked this area specifically because it was already cleared. So we don't have to take down very many trees here. There is just like a thin layer of dirty moss on top of the gravel. And that's what I'm scraping down for us right now. And the driveway is gonna come in. It's gonna go by the, the uh, Connex where our solar panels are. It's gonna kind of circle. And at the top of the circle over on that side is where the shop's gonna go. And then it's gonna wind around and it's gonna shoot back over by the house somewhere. That is the section we haven't actually marked out yet. We've marked out up until here. And I wasn't thinking I was gonna get this far this fast. So we need to start putting in some more stakes, mark out where the rest of this driveway is gonna go. It looks like a couple trees are gonna to have to go. I had to get pretty close to their roots when I was scraping this down. And then the plan is to come back later on and put gravel over this whole entire thing. So we still got a lot of work cut out for us. These two along with all these little ones have that's, to go, but that's, that's right that's, where the shop's going. That's pretty much it. Check out these massive roots that are on this tree. I mean, look at this thing. It's like a 
sea creature of some sort. And this is called a quaking aspen and they're they're usable. We're probably just gonna cut this one up and use it for firewood, but the roots don't go that deep. They kind of sit and like go out and we were able to push this one over with the Branson and it struggled a tiny bit, but it got it over. We could probably do one a little bit bigger and I'll kind of show you the soil that we're working with here. This is what is in the ground. So it's a lot of roots. I don't know. I guess I'd call it like clay maybe? Almost clay, yeah. Clay soil, like I can ball it up. So yeah, that's like clay. And then there's moss in there and then there's like old broken down wood and just a bunch of stuff. So this is one of our piles. We have two big piles so far. We're probably gonna end up with about four when we're done with this thing. And this will all go into the garden. Well, maybe not all of it, but we'll mix this with like horse manure and other amendments and we'll let it break down. And then when we put it in our garden, we'll have a jump start on a bunch of dirt. And we're just trying to put these piles where they're kind of out of the way so they're not in our way later and we have to move them again. amazing how when it's 70 degrees here it feels way warmer I'm not sure if it's our intolerance to the heat or what maybe it's just that we're higher up on the earth and it feels a lot warmer I think that's the case because we're we're probably not even at 70 but it just feels blistering out here we've got to remeasure where the shop's going we decided to shift it a little bit to the left and back from when we first originally measured it out in the winter months and in this particular area there are some older stumps really, really big trees. That last one must have been huge. And I think these trees were taken down about a decade ago. So that's kind of cool. They're already decomposing and they're pretty easy for Eric to just lift out with the tractor. I thought the shop was going to start a little more in the front, like more forward. It is. So what are we marking? work a little section at a time you know what I mean well that was a nice day's work so we put a little over three hours just tractor time and we got a ton of work done and I actually haven't even like looked back at what we completed so let's take a look around the new driveway so the shop is going back there somewhere in that vicinity so we got a nice wide corner here and the reason we're kind of setting it up this way and we have it nice as wide is for backing into the shop so you have a big trailer you have a truck tractor whatever you swing around the turn and then you can almost do like a straight shot back into the shop it looks like this section is a lot higher i didn't really dig down that deep but you can see we're already hitting like really nice gravel right there a lot more work needs to be done up here i left some nice ruts looks like we can use a little widening right here maybe about three feet wider and this is a really low spot so we're either gonna have to fill this in from one of the high spots with dirt or we'll have to pile this up with some gravel this whole section over here we completed like a few days ago we're just kind of testing things out but this is dried up really nice and this was already a really cool 
flat section right here. And then if you go all the way down here, this is where it kind of connects with the main driveway. For some reason, there was a ditch here, and this is like exactly where we wanted this driveway to go. We wanted to kind of be next to the forest, but not too close where we're gonna be digging up the roots. So we've got a couple high spots that we're gonna be able to come along and scrape some of that gravel into this little pit. And I got a marker there and a marker there. You'll come off the main driveway and you'll head in this way. Are you playing? And that's what it's gonna look like in the future. And then we'll Fantastic. gravel it up almost to the same height of the brush on the side, you know? Or the moss. It's so tan. You can't hide a red nick. Well, I think we might do a little more work out here tonight, widening things up. And then the next step is gonna be putting gravel down on this whole area. And we actually started our own gravel pit. So that should be pretty awesome. But we're gonna pick up with this project in a couple days. We have a concrete truck coming at about 9 to 9.30 tomorrow morning. So we're gonna get rested up and we got a long day of work tomorrow, but we'll pick up on this project and see you guys in a couple days. You did a really nice job, hon. Thank you, I'm gonna start a business. It's called A&E Excavation, except it's just E working. <laughs> hey, it looks good, man. It's 4.15, we left on schedule, we are fried as patty cakes. I think we're well over 20 hours of daylight and we're headed to Fairbanks for a supply run for the Quonset hut. Don't drive without sleeping at all. You slept, no. I didn't sleep. I tossed and turned for like five hours straight and then I woke up and looked out the window and you were outside filming stuff at three in the morning. <laughs> so I decided to make coffee. <laughs> Here we are, drinking that coffee. It's still ice down there. Pretty big, huh? Yeah, it's crazy. It's June. It's just 80 degrees. There's like four feet of ice down there. <laughs> Long drive, we finally made it. Our first stop is Fairbanks Block and Building Material. We're picking up supplies for the Kwanzaa Hut shop and we're getting some wire mesh and some rebar. A lot of unusual things we're picking up today, shapes, sizes, and weights. And the next thing we're picking up is gonna be foam board insulation. I think we're gonna get like 80 sheets of it. So I whipped up some V boards yesterday and these are gonna help us tie those down without cutting a strap into it. So we'll get this all secured and we'll head off to the next stop. All right, Uresco construction materials. How many did you get, Eric? Huh? How many did you get? We got 80. We needed 75 at 2,400 square feet, so 75 is a little much, and then we bought five extras just in case. Like that. One like that. I wish I was 6'4 instead of 6'2, huh? <laughs> Go to your rescos. Well, that wasn't exactly how we were planning on doing it, but we got it up there. It's on the trailer. It's nice and tall. The V boards working great. Let's head on down the road. Check out this tree. There's all sorts of honeybees on it. We are making a pit stop for the boys. Eric ran into Home Depot. I think we're wrapping up our errands, but I love when I see honeybees out and about because 
these are someone's honeybees. Maybe they're even a few different people's hives. I don't quite know. I don't know what this tree is, but they are all over it. And there's all sorts of other native bees on here too. So I just thought it was pretty cool. How was your trip? I'm tired. No pex piping? Oh, that's it? It's pex piping. Nine rolls. We're just about wrapped up here. It has been a long day with not a lot of sleep as usual. And we're leaving Home Depot. We got one of the main key elements to the shop and that's going to be for in floor heating this is hex pipe we have nine 300 foot rolls let's figure out how to get this on the trailer and let's head home have returned from Fairbanks with our supplies and it's been about a week. We've had time to decide more supplies that we need. So we ran back up there. We've got another full trailer load. This is the shop build. So let's go take a look at the Quonset hut and we'll show you exactly what we're working with. This is the Quonset hut. And one of the coolest things about these steel buildings is the fact that you can just order these, they ship them to you on pallets and you can assemble them yourself. So ours came on six pallets or six and a half. It weighed 12,000 pounds. We hauled it up here in two trailers. And these things come in different styles. They come in different sizes. Ours is from a company called Steelmaster and it is their A model. The dimensions are roughly 63 feet long, 37 feet wide, and it's got a peak of about 17 feet. A lot of these you'll see are just like completely round buildings. I mentioned ours is a model A, so you'll have flat walls. You'll have those big ones right there that kind of curve up. You'll have more flat and then you'll have a curve on top. The reason I wanted to kind of go with that as opposed to a round one is I wanted full space of the hut. So in a round one, you're kind of limited when you get along the walls as far as like parking stuff or having a workbench. This one uses these straight pieces of metal right here. It goes straight down to the floor. So you get like 100% usable space in this hut. We opted not to buy the end walls from this company. You can buy them from them and they're just made out of metal. They look similar to the hut. We're gonna be building our own end walls out of wood with the sawmill. And you can put these things on all different kinds of foundations. You can do them on gravel, dirt, up on piers. We are gonna be doing doing an insulated concrete slab. We're gonna have radiant floor heating. We're gonna have a coal stove as backup heat. And then we're gonna be doing some sort of insulation on the hut later down the road. This is gonna be a big undertaking for us. And it looks like Ariel already got started on the gravel. I'm gonna hop on the tractor. We're gonna see if we can get her done. There's a lot of gravel we gotta haul over here. And the gravel pit is super deep at this point. I can't even see Eric working and he's doing an awesome job. Everything's going great. I think he is almost done out here. Lots of bugs, Peppy.
mosquitoes found us out here. They are just swarming and it's like a new breed that showed up. So these are the little ones. I think these are actually not, huh? Uh, well, whatever they are, they're biting and they're, they're making me itch. So that side went really well. That was actually a, a wide spot, but that was closer to the gravel pit. This side over here is a lot further from the gravel pit and it was a lot bumpier. So I'm having a little more trouble on this side, smoothing it out. Right here, I'm trying to take out this little hill and it is like the most compact dirt gravel whatever it is i've ever seen and the bucket couldn't do it and the backhoe is barely just scraping it so we're taking that little hill out and then we also have a little dip over here that we're gonna have to fill in i got a little bit of dirt from that but i think i'm gonna have to start running a bunch of gravel and filling that in it's taken a long time all in all we've been out here all day so uh, i think i've had maybe like six or seven more hours of actual tractor work on the tractor and it's cool though we connected the u-shaped driveway so we have gravel on the whole thing we still need more gravel, and I think that's gonna do it for the night. We're pretty beat, so we'll uh, come up with another game plan for tomorrow, and we'll get back out here and keep working on this driveway. Look at the bugs. Oh. Sunflower seeds handy for snacking. Another busy morning. So I put a few more hours on the tractor uh, doing some work over there. I was filling in that big hole and this side of the driveway just needed more gravel. So we are at 50 hours and according to my Branson manual, it is time for complete service of this thing. So we're gonna go over the whole tractor and I'm gonna look for loose bolts, hoses, anything I can just visually see that's wrong. And then we're gonna do some of the fluids. We're gonna do hydraulic fluid. This is a hydrostatic transmission, so it's the transmission too. This takes over 10 gallons of fluid. So we gotta drain out 10 gallons, put 10 gallons in there. We're gonna do the oil in the engine. Oh, and the front axle. We're gonna be doing gear oil in the front axle. Let's get going on this. We're gonna start with draining some of the fluids. Let's hope this doesn't squirt on me. That's really uh, clear. Yeah, that's good though. Oh my gosh. The suction. Did you pull it off? Yeah. Yeah, it just like really started coming out when you did that. It's suction. Yeah. That, Holy my friend, cow. is physics. Coming out any faster? Oh yeah, there it goes. Okay, from the looks of this thing, how the heck do you get that thing off? How the, how do you get in there? What the, oh, you know what it is? It's because we have this backhoe on here. This thing's like right in the way. Oh my gosh, this is like. That was a mission. As you can tell by these holes in these hydraulic oil filters, I could get the wrench on the small one, but it, it wasn't gripping it enough. It was too tight. So I pounded a hole in it with the screwdriver, twisted it off. The big one, apparently you need to remove your backhoe before you get to that one. So next time we do this service, we'll take the backhoe off prior. I've got one gallon in the front axle. It takes 1.9 gallons. Let's get her topped off. This isn't working like I thought. Perfect. All right, front axle's done. I was literally messing around with it for like 10 minutes and then all of a sudden it just came out. Ah. All right, now comes the fun part. We got to put 10, 10 gallons in this bad boy. Well, last time we went to Fairbanks and I was buying all my supplies to do this uh, maintenance on this tractor. I did my research. O'Reilly's, they said they had the oil or online it said they had the oil and they didn't and you need 10 gallons. So Aaron and I were like going all over Fairbanks trying to find what we needed and I cross-referenced the oil to what would work. <laughs> this is a Branson and unfortunately we're putting a Kubota oil in it. So this is the like expensive Kubota oil. This stuff was not cheap. We're gonna put this in this time and next time we go, we're gonna do a little more planning on my end and uh, 
call and make sure places have the oil and then we'll um, get the right oil next time. How do I get this out? It says Kubota Super UDT2 Universal Transmission Hydraulic Fluid. I mean, these things are heavy, but. No, you're, are you crazy? What do you mean? I got a funnel on that. There she goes. The beginning of the end, 10 gallons. You thought the gravel took a long time. We're gonna be here a while with this. I hope it goes in smoothly and it doesn't start bubbling out like the front axle. Oh my gosh, my arm's gonna be killing me today. Well, it went good out here. The Branson has 50 hours on it. It's been absolutely awesome for us. And we're finishing up with the oil, which I just did. And I'm gonna grease everything on the front end loader, everything on the backhoe. And there's a bunch of grease fittings on the tractor and the front axle. And we're gonna fire her up, check the levels again on all the oils. And we're gonna get back to work. See, it pushes that old grease out. Gives you the new stuff. Yeah. While Eric's working, I just wanted to show you some fun stuff around here. The bees are doing really good. They were kind of off to a slow start with the weather, but it seems like they're doing a lot better now. I was just over here a few minutes ago and they were just totally buzzing around the front. The potatoes are doing pretty good. Believe it or not, we had a frost. I think it was June 12th. So extremely late. I don't know if that's late for this area. It's probably not out of the normal, um, but that, that's really late. And so when we have a garden, hopefully next year, we plan to have like frost blankets and things like that because I would have had everything planted by that time. And our potatoes, a lot of them had sprouts, but they died. So they'll be okay. They're gonna have to regrow some new sprouts, but that was a little bit uh, unexpected, I guess. We have baby chicks hatching out. There is one hatching out under this gray hen as we speak. So I'm gonna grab it and show you what it looks like. What are you giving them? Water. We give it to them. Yeah, they're thirsty. We've got baby chickens, and that is a good reason to celebrate. That and Eric is almost done with the pad for our shop. He's been working on it all day yesterday and a lot of today. There's still a little bit more work to do, but we figured we'd celebrate out there this evening with some food. The chicks started hatching yesterday. We've got three moms hatching them out and we like to come out here and just check on them. Well, I like to come out here a lot and check on them pretty routinely. So they're doing well and there's still more to go, right? Good. There's a black one in there I haven't seen. Doesn't that just melt your little heart? You tell them. Pipe up.
We may not have a big house, but we got a big pad. Uh -huh. What do you think? It's still a hair low in the back, what? but not, babe, it just is. I'm sorry. How? It's almost perfect. I scraped this all down. It's huge. And what's this? There's nowhere we can pull gravel from. I have to pull it from that area. Four or five inches. The only thing I can think to do would be do what I was already doing and scrape some of that front section over to here. Oh my god, the wind is blowing him. Hot day out here and check out our new pad. So I thought I was actually gonna get this thing done today, but I didn't. And I looked at the tractor and we have like 6.5 hours on it since I started this little project over here, which I don't think is too bad. We got a lot done with that tractor. It honestly amazes me how good of a job that thing does. But this is obviously a lot bigger than the shop's gonna be. We wanted room on the sides. We want room on the back. We have to get a concrete truck in here. We have to do a bunch of work. So it's absolutely huge right now. And it looks like the back is still a little bit low. We were using our laser to check the grade. So we found one spot that we really liked the level and then we went around and kind of check the other levels. The back was four inches too low. That corner was two inches too high. And it takes a long time to bring gravel over here from our little pit. So I'm gonna work on that again tomorrow. We'll get it nice and leveled off, but it, so far it looks really awesome. I dug down with the tractor about six to eight inches through like this soily stuff that we have here to hit the gravel bed. And this was pretty much just like a meadow before we started. I think I took down like one or two full-size trees and that was it. And we ended up with two huge dirt piles, but it's looking good. It's about the time to eat dinner. We're getting hungry. We're gonna bring a couple things out here. We're gonna have a little cookout in the middle of the pad. That butterfly is on your nose, Bo. He doesn't even care. Do you see its face? It looks like a chicken. It does look like a chicken, huh? Do you want help moving that? You got it. Watch out, dude. It's a big bean. You want me to kind of press it into the... You want to cook the dough first? Yeah, I want to cook the dough. So... Is it okay? I'm just going to plop it down and work it on the edges then. Is That's that okay? what I would do. What do I got in here for kindling? got some delicious tea and then we are making pizza. We were going for like a deep dish style. We used to live somewhere where you could get old Chicago pizza and it was, there was a deep dish that was really delicious. But my sourdough is a little bit moist so it's not quite taking shape. So we'll see how it turns out but we're gonna make or we already made some spruce tip uh, pesto and we have a whole bunch of other delicious ingredients to add. That's good. Got some zing to it. All kinds of good things. Fermented honey garlic. Like Ariel said, the spruce tip pesto. We have a variety of olives, Kalamata olives and some spicy green ones, salami, and a bunch of mozzarella. You know what I mean? Look at that. so hot right now. Alright, let's get some, get some more heat on this thing. Pretty much just cook it from the top. Almost there. We are gonna Kick it up a notch. We're gonna drizzle a little bit of the garlic honey on there. Do you know what it looks like? A popper. It, why is it, it's like, like greenish because of the, uh, that's enough, just a little, just a drizzle. Definitely a deep dish. Whoa. That cheese is like crisped. Got me in the eye. 
Okay. Okay, let's let it cool. That is a messy one. Bon Appetit. That looks amazing. And we're gonna enjoy the pizza. We're having a great time out here building this new shop. It's coming along. We're gonna see you guys on the next one. No forks. <laughs> well, no, not really. You cooked it on a campfire in high heat. It is what it is, you know? No, but I didn't say it was burned. I just said it was a little, the bottom's a little crispy. Oh, the spruce tip is good. It has such a... Well, it's sprucey. Such a weird flavor, I can't. Oh yeah. It just tastes like citrus here. One more day out here of working, but what depth? Approximately. The ones on the long sides are supposed to be 18 inches deep and then 20 inches across on the bottom. The front and the back are supposed to be 18 inches deep and 18 inches or 12 inches, 18 inches, I think, something like that. There's gonna be a lot of gravel coming out of those footers. That's good. Put it in the driveway. I'm gonna put it in that bumpy part of the driveway. Gentle. Okay. Shh, <laughs>